Um, welcome to Saturday's Team Aloha call. We have a special guest speaker today. I posted about it in the team page. I'm, we're just meeting for the first time actually. Welcome, Dave. We're excited to have you. Uh, Caitlin actually brought Dave on to our team and she mentioned that he does photography and could give us, could, you know, lead a team call and be the guest speaker and share with us some tips on how to, um, you know, enhance our photos or whatever. He's going to go into all that stuff. So I'm not going to take away from that, but, um, he already works a full-time job a lot, 60 to 70 hours a week. Uh, he became a coach because he fell in love with the products, got amazing results, has a huge transformation and not necessarily as like to make money, but he's just passionate about being in shape and helping people and sees that we have an amazing opportunity at our fingertips and has been slowly growing his Instagram account. You can fi find him on Instagram, Irish Dave. Irish at, at, at Irish Dior, so. Yeah. At Irish Dior. Yeah. Um, and he has some great posts and he's gonna share his story of immigration from Ireland to the United States. He's gonna give us some tips on how we can make our photography better more eye appealing posts and things like that. And then he's going to, at the end, share some words of encouragement about this amazing opportunity that we have here in the US, Canada, UK, and now France. <laughs> so I'm not gonna take time. You can you know, feel free to introduce yourself. Yeah. That's like pretty much all I know about you. So that's pretty much all there is to me. So there you go. <laughs> I'm gonna mute. So thank it's you silly. so much for being here and we're all that's excited to hear from you. That's brilliant, absolutely. Let me share my screen. Uh, is there a way to share some stuff here as well? Yeah, just let me know when I can. You should I, be able to share right. your screen. I try, okay, so for a living, like I spend a lot of time doing presentations and stuff like that, so it's kind of my go-to, just to, even though I go completely off track, so there'll be a good chance of that too. It says, it still says disabled uh, screen sharing, so let me double check that one. But nice to meet all you guys. So, I mean, people call me Irish Dave because I'm from Ireland and there's so many Daves, I guess. I don't know. But when I came to the States, um, you know, back in 2014, uh, I actually worked um, for a, a major insurance company. And when I was working there, there was actually a guy, uh, his name was Dave too, but he's from England. And so they used to call him English Dave and me Irish Dave. Uh, and that's stuck. So like I've since I no longer work for that co company. I work for a different company here in Colorado Springs is where I'm based uh, out of right now. And it's interesting because that's carried through. So people still call me Irish Dave. So I'm like, all right, if that's if that's what <laughs> that helps people remember who I am. So, you know, uh, it still says host disabled participating. So I'm not sure if there's a setting or something, but either way, but um, Try it now. Oh, there we go. Okay, I just had to. I had to turn it on for you. Sorry. Perfect. All right, let me try. I'm. I'm more used to using uh, some of the other things uh, to, to at work, not so much Zoom. So let me see. Let me know when you see my screen, and let me know what you see. I guess. Right. Okay, we can see it, and it says light writing and writing your story. It's yeah. An image. Perfect. So that's that's bad. So this is kind of will kind of help us guide through some of the conversation today. Um, but really, like what I was thinking about when um, this came about to maybe chat with you guys, I was thinking about you know you know I have a background in photography. There's no way I can get into like all aspects of photography today, just because I spent three years studying that back in Ireland, uh, maybe about 15 years ago. And with that, you know, there's just so much to it, but there's probably elements or, or, or things I can share that you might find valuable. And that's exactly what I'm going to try and do here. And the reason I call it light writing, and uh, you may know this, but photography means to write with light. That's literally what it means because it's all about light. And it's all about writing your story through photography, which is the, you know, the light writing piece and then writing your own story. So I think that's, that's an important piece. So um, today, uh, and let me know if this changes okay. You can see next three, you should say me, tactics, you. Everyone see that? Yep, we can see it. So really this is gonna be three kind of sections of what I'm looking to do today. And really just talk a little bit about me because uh, I guess people find that interesting. It's like what's an Irish guy doing hanging out over here? So I'll touch on that a little bit. 
Um, I'll talk a little bit about tactics. And when I talk about tactics, I talk about just what I do, um, you know, photography wise. I don't do that much photography anymore. I used to be heavily involved with it. I, I had a, a business for about 10 years where I was in that space, multimedia with video. Um, I did work for, uh, you know, different magazines, newspapers. I had a brick and mortar studio. So I had a, a lot of time in that space. I did photography for musicians um, and things like that. So, so I have a background that I, I haven't done that in several years, um, but at least I can talk to some of those items as well for you today. And then talk about you because um, to Marissa's point is, is the opportunity you guys have. And it's, that's what excites me is when I saw what this was all about. I was like, lads, this is brilliant, you know? It ticks a lot of boxes. And so that's why I was quick to move into that space of beach body and demand. I haven't yet capitalized on that fully yet, um, but I just want to touch on, on the opportunity um, that's right in front of all of us, you know? Um, so my intent really here, as you can see, is to, I'm really here for you guys. I really want to bring you value. So if you want to stop me at any point or ask me a question or go a whole different direction, I'm grand to do that. Like, I don't mind at all. I don't want to waste your time. And that's, that's a big thing for me. So really want to bring you guys value. And, and if, if you got questions at any point, just ask me questions. There's no bad questions. Um, I have some slides put together, but we can go off course. And I probably will go off script because uh, it's very well known when I'm presenting in my job that if someone says something in a room, that there's a good chance I'll go chasing after that rabbit and I'm, I'm gone for a while. So, and that could happen too, which is, which is fine by me. Um, but a little bit of who, who I am, you know, I'm in senior leadership um, in the healthcare space. So that's what I do. I oversee a West Coast operation. Some, um, some of the, I've got some um, teams as well that operate out of Florida. Um, but I'm in that space uh, in senior leadership. It's not something that I set off up to do in life. And when I talk a little bit about that, I just kind of fell into it. Um, you know, I mentioned again, Irish Dave, that's what people call me. Um, but uh, immigrated in 2014. And I'll talk a little bit, a bit about that. And um, you're 90% Irish. I think that's pretty cool. So I'll tell you a little bit about that. My brother did one of these DNA tests. And I was like, oh, no. Like, what if it comes back and it says, like, you're whatever other country in all my life I've been claiming to the world, you know, I'm Irish, you know, that's who I am and proud of it. And so when he did this test and it came back that we were that much Irish, I'm like, okay, I, I'm good with that, you know. But not only that, but uh, the area in Ireland I'm from, and I'll show you a picture in a minute, is called Cork. And it's the south coast of Ireland. And even when you heat mapped it, we didn't really move out of that that much. So like uh, we didn't get out much, honestly. So, um, but we'll talk a little bit more about that. Another slide. So I'm married. I've been married since 2004. I have three kids, two boys and a girl. Um, so I got a nice little family here as well. And photography. So I was actually telling this to Caitlin yesterday. I, I don't think I'd mentioned up, up to this point, but I'd mentioned that, uh, oh yeah, my, my grandfather and my great grandfather were photographers too. Um, my great grandfather and my grandfather, I have their cameras in my office at work. And um, one of those took a picture of Titanic, which I have um, a picture of the original picture of Titanic and the camera that he took it with because that was his last port of call is where I'm from. So like there's like a history of photography there, which is quite interesting. And I actually didn't find that out till after I became a photographer. I had gone through all the training and someone had given me like boxes of negatives and glass negatives. I'm like, wait a second, like this is the same stuff that I'm doing. So Anyway, history of photography. As I mentioned, multimedia, I had a studio in Ireland. Uh, I did some work in that space. I built my own business back in Ireland. Uh, and uh, Indiana Jones, I studied archaeology for a year uh, in University College Cork, just for the fun of it, just because I wanted to be Indiana Jones, I guess. Uh, and really, at this point, I'm aspiring to be some kind of a mentor or a coach or, or just bring value, kind of like stuff like this today. Um, honestly, and you, you said it well, Marissa, it's not for the money for me. It's genuinely to try and bring some value to others um, is what I want to do, you know, and, and this is just such a great platform to do that. And I think that's the same for a lot of us here. There's a passion to influence or bring value to someone else's life and what a great platform to do so. Um, any questions on anything so far? I just want to pause for a second to make sure I don't go running down the, the road here and have a sip of coffee. in a very flowery cup so um so anyway the and you can stop me if you do have questions at any point but uh, really what drives me and i think this is uh, and i say this to my team so i've got a large team you know um it, 
in what I do. Uh, I've also got immediate um, leadership around me. So I've got, you know, managers and supervisors that I work with regularly. And even with that, that I always tell them positivity is, is a huge thing for me. I mean, it's so important that we remain positive, especially in these times, you know, it's critical. Um, and that's what I need to be around. I need to be around positive people. Um, so at my team, but also outside of my team, even at work. So in and out of work, that's a huge thing for me is that positivity piece. And then impacting lives uh, through my job. I'm very grateful that I have a job where I can impact hundreds of lives in what I do each day. And that's, that's just, just, just a, such a good thing for me. And, and that's what energizes me and it keeps me going. Um, and this, as I said, beach body in demand, just life and the fitness. And we'll talk a little bit about that here in a few minutes, but I've been on a bit of a fitness journey for the last, uh, you know, five or six months, uh, really specifically, um, you know, and just talking through as well, like you guys have such a unique opportunity and, and such a, such a, in an area where you can impact so many lives to something that's so meaningful to so many people. It's just so exciting. But once again, we'll talk about that a little bit later. So just kind of um, gearing up the next few slides, but this is how I ended up here and, and I won't spend too long on this and I'm not sure how much time I have, but like you can, you can disconnect the call if you get bored and there's no problem there. Um, but this is kind of how I ended up here. And I, I included just a couple of pictures. Uh, you can see the picture in the top left side, hopefully. Um, that's my, oldest boy when we moved here uh, looking at the airplane before we came to America um, you can see the middle picture here with the, the suitcases so we, when we moved to America we had four suitcases that was it and back in 2014 we had nothing else I had $1,500 because we sold all our stuff and uh, I moved into a two-car gar garage in Flagstaff Arizona because a friend of mine said I have a two-car garage if you want to live in there and um, if you guys want to come to America and have a go at it you can certainly and that's what we can offer you. And I said, perfect, you know? And so um, we moved to Flagstaff, Arizona in 2014. Um, you know, I had my friend there and all the neighbors in the neighborhood got together and they put rugs down in the two car garage and they got beds that they set up for us. They put this big sheet over the garage door. Um, so we didn't feel like we were in someone's garage. Uh, and that was really our first place we lived when we came to America. Um, I had no job. Uh, I had no job prospects, um, you know, I had my kids, my wife, and it was a little bit terrifying just to sit there, look around you and see some kids sleeping at nighttime in a garage thinking, how on earth am I going to make this happen in this country? But I'm in this country and there's a lot of opportunity. It's big and I know I can work hard and whatever it takes. So my very first job was with a temp agency. Um, I did that for about two weeks uh, just because it was the quickest job I can get. And that was a janitor. Uh, at the uh, NAU, so uh, the university there. So I used, to, my, I used to have to get up at three in the morning. My friend used to get out of bed, drive me, drop me off, go home, go back to bed. And I'd work until 10 the next morning. I did that for about two weeks just because I, I had no money. So I had to make some money. So that was my first job. And then someone offered me um, a window cleaning, carpet cleaning job. Um, down in Phoenix and so I went to Phoenix um, and there was a church down there that said hey we've got uh, and there's a huge background I won't spend too much time into it but uh, I had known some people they heard I was in America and they said we've got a church down here we've got an empty apartment if you want to come down to Scottsdale Arizona you can certainly live here for free while you try and get your feet up and going so I went down there and I worked uh, I did carpet cleaning and window cleaning for about two months I think around that time frame um, I had left my wife and kids back up in Flagstaff, but that didn't last too long because after about a week, a lizard ended up on the bed and my wife called me and said, you've got to get me out of here. I'm done with living in a garage. <laughs> I'm like, okay, absolutely. So I just remember hopping in my car, going up and grabbing Mindy and the kids and, and bringing them back down to Scottsdale as we were trying to get stuff established and I was trying to figure out how to get work going um, after that then. And that's what that picture here is us in Arizona. but. Um, you know, from there, I, I applied for jobs all over the country. Didn't really matter to me where it was. I was willing to go anywhere. It didn't matter to me what the position was as long as I can get in somewhere. And, and I won't name the company, but I got a very, very large insurance company in an entry level position. And uh, when I started working there, um, they, they started to tell me within the first week, you're acting like you own the whole place. And this place has like 70,000 employees. And I'm like, well, Nick, I'm used to kind of running my own thing and I'm a hard worker. And when you arrive in a country and you've got a wife and kids 
and you've got fifteen hundred dollars and you got to make a go at it like you tend to work very hard and be a bit more aggressive in how you go about things and and that's what happened so um you know just thank goodness i was able to you know get a number of promotions in a very very short period of time which was very unusual um but i just happened to have a background where they had a, a need for some things that my skill sets and and from there i spent four years working for that organization and you know about 18 19 months ago now um i was recruited by another organization and they relocated me to colorado springs where i am now so it's been a crazy five and a half six years um just arriving in a country no guarantee and and i'm just so happy that things have worked out of course um but it just goes to show um once again back to what i talked about at the start the opportunity that's in this country like it just blows my mind i'm like i can't understand like um, you know, obviously people go through things and, and not to take away from that, but there's still opportunity out there. And especially with a platform like we have today where we, we have our phones and we've got programs like Beachbody On Demand and we've got an opportunity to connect with millions of people around the world. I mean, it's just right there in front of you. So why not have a go at it? You know, I, I did not have any guarantee of things working out in America, but I knew that there was enough stuff there that I'd have a chance if I worked hard enough. And I took the opportunity that was there. And I think that's a big piece um, of what you guys can do here. So any questions or any, anything you want me to maybe dial in on more uh, just before I move forward as far as how I ended up here? I know that was kind of quick and kind of jumping around, but any other, any comments, thoughts, or questions? <laughs> I'll pause for a minute. It drives, it drives my teams crazy at work because I'll stay quiet happily <laughs> and they're like, what are you doing? Don't leave us in silence. I'm like, I'm okay with silence. Um, so, <laughs> so I'll jump on a little bit because I've got a few more slides and, and really this part is my health journey and this is the, the, the newest piece uh, for me. Um, you know, I actually am 209 pounds as of today. I'm obviously very much tracking my weight daily because I'm obsessed with it a little bit. Um, you know, but yeah, it, it's like, uh, you can see the pictures here, you know, uh, and you can even see in some of the expressions, I think when you start looking at the before and after you, I always wonder when you see before and after pictures, like, are they deliberately trying to look sad? <laughs> like, so when they have their after pictures, they look a bit happier or they look more whatever. But I genuinely believe that there's a real, even without showing any facial expression, you can see when people are satisfied or where they're at in life. And that was the case for me. Um, sitting at 304 pounds um, back last end of November, December time frame, um, you know, and it's very tough. Like this one's actually a picture of me in a wheelchair uh, at a hospital visit. And, you know, it's a picture of me back up in Idaho and just, you know, my whole life, I've never been someone who's not been fit or that has been fit. So I've always been someone who's not been fit. I've always been someone who um, has struggled with my weight. I've always been someone who struggled with being active and, you know, where I'm at right now, and I'm still not where I need to be. I've got, I think I've got my mindset on where I want to end up and I'm nowhere near that in my mind. But even now the benefits of, you know, the fact that this morning I posted on my Instagram account that for the first time I need a new belt because this one's too big. That's never been an issue my whole life, you know? So all these things are just crazy for me. The energy I have now to be able to play with my kids, the energy I have to be able to to walk i signed up to do this marathon next month like over throughout the month um you know for, to raise money because my brother had cancer back in 2011 and so the irish cancer society have an opportunity to do this marathon and raise money and i couldn't even walk a mile like five and a half six months ago so like it's just amazing to start seeing some of the benefits of having to go through the story but you know this is what um i've been on for the last five and a half six months and this is what brings me into kind of that Beachbody demand, demand um, story. You know, I heard about it, didn't know anything about it, and I just started looking into it a little bit and downloaded the app on the TV, and I was like, this looks cool. Then I came across Caitlin online, and I had nothing to do with Beachbody and Demand initially. It was just because of the community there and just uh, everyone encouraging other, each other. And we connected one Saturday, and we had, a, we had a chat about who we are and where it came from, and I learned a little bit more about her and what she's doing with her coaching uh, work and I wanted to get involved right away. I was like, this is a no-brainer. That's 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 not much money for what you're getting in return. And so I signed up and I've been utilizing the programs and 
and the Shakeology things like that and really enjoyed um, what's on offer there. And uh, it's just been real cool. So I'm really intrigued with what you guys are doing. As I said, I haven't leaned into it fully because I do work 60, 70 hours a week right now. Um, I'm doing it a little bit on the side, um, but I'm seeing even things like this, maybe I can bring value to people too, just by encouraging or just giving some of my background. So that kind of covers like a lot of, um, you know, how I end up in America in a high level, uh, how like my weight loss journey a little bit. And then the next piece is really gonna dive into why I'm actually here is the whole photography piece. Um, so, you know, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what type of cameras are available you know, what type of lenses, just briefly, just to kind of give a quick highlight. But I'm also going to talk about whether you even need it or not. And honestly, you don't need half of it. Um, it's going to talk about some light and creative lighting, some applications that I use. So just practical things, nothing too in depth. As I said, there's not enough time to really go deep into some of these items, but at least give you guys an idea of what I do. Um, and you can see here some examples, of some of my photographs, like this is my son here, that I took a picture just at home using a uh, softbox and just a single softbox uh, up in my living room. I, I've done weddings in the past. I've you know, done wildlife photography for you to see this bison here in the snow, pictures and landscape photography back in Ireland. So these are some examples of the work I would do if I was doing photography, you know. Um, but really what I want to talk about today is more kind of what are the quick things you can do even with just your phone because that's what I use 99% of the time. It's because technology is finally catching up to a place, you know. So uh, type of cameras and lenses. So this up here at the top right hand side, this is my gear that I have, you know, gimbal. I have um, two um, DSLR bodies that I use and I got a few lenses, some flashes. That's what I would use if I was doing landscape work, if I was doing some, uh, you know, portrait shots or a wedding, that's the kind of equipment there. And um, types of cameras that are available, everything from like your smartphone all the way through your compact cameras to your mirrorless cameras to your professional DSLR cameras. And there's pros and cons of all different things. They do have their own place, um, you know, depending on what you want to do. Um, and, you know, what I have, you know, I have all that equipment. But once again, I use my phone more than anything else just because it's practical. And you can still get some fantastic results. And I'll show you a little bit of what I do to get some results um, using my phone. And video is also an interesting space. I use my phone for that a lot with the gimbal. You just throw it in your gimbal and it stabilizes everything. Um, so, so it's just very quick. Um, but if I was going to do some video that I wanted to do of a high quality or recording, and we'll say a workout or something, I'd probably turn something like a DSLR just to be able to get more higher quality um, work. So they all have their place. But as I said, 99% of the time I use my phone. Um, there's pros and cons to all different types of lenses from prime lenses, and they serve a different purpose for low light or portrait type work. So you can really blur out the background all the way out to zoom lenses and wide angle lenses. So there's a whole lot of variety as far as equipment. Um, but really what I'm gonna talk about is more like what can you do with your phone, applications, things that you have available to you right away and you can use quickly and get some results. So any questions on types of cameras, lenses, or, or anything um, as far as what I've just covered here? No, cool. And I will say, I like this quote, the best camera is the one that you have with you. I've always lived by that quote. You can have all the cameras in the world. And I've been in situations where uh, I've been out and about and you'll see something incredible. And guess what? I don't have all my gear with me, but I have my phone and it still was able to achieve a great shot. And it's all about capturing um, a story or capturing something that people can connect with. And you can certainly do that with a phone. So just to, just to say all that to say the best camera is the one you have with you, honestly. So. Um, so how to make people stop and look uh, and that's really what we're trying to do in a lot of the cases when we post online is how do we stop people in their tracks versus the thousands and thousands of images they're seeing all day and there's things you can do about being different so framing angles now I'll show a little bit on that and um, you know also about being real sometimes I'll just post something that's it's not being touched up it's just a quick picture I took and I think that has its place too because people want to see reality they want to see real life and sometimes it's about documenting versus creating beautiful products or uh, beautiful things or end results sometimes it's just about capturing and documenting what you're doing so they do have their own place but sometimes it's nice to post an image of a product type thing or or maybe a headshot or something like that uh, and so i'll talk a little bit about how i achieve some of those shots and does it look like everybody else's whether that's good or bad 
I mean, really, what I try to do is how can I make this look a little bit different from maybe thousands of other pictures? And I'll show you two examples of that too here in just a moment. And then tell a story. So what you put in the frame, and, I, and when I started um, studying photography, we went months without touching a camera. And I'm like, what the heck is all this about? Like, I, study, I signed up to study photography. We're not touching cameras. We're not in the studio. Like, this is stupid. Um, but like we spent all this time going through a slideshow and looking at slides from, you know, from the 1800s, 1900s, like all different eras of photography. And we started to understand that there's a story here. What you place in the frame, even up at the top end corner, all these items are telling you a story and it can speak into a lot, even small things. So just what's in the frame does matter. So whenever I take a picture, even if it is one of those quick shots that isn't going to be high quality, I have that in my mind, so like what's in the frame that's going to help tell this story. And so I'm very conscious of that. So keep that in mind. Then color theory, way to color. There's a whole lot of stuff. You can spend months learning about uh, the weight of color, how a red color might pull you down this area or this color might draw your attention up over this color. And you can do that real quickly with photography. And I'll show you an example here actually on the next slide um, where you'll see some elements of that color theory there. Apps that I can use. Everyone's heard of Adobe Photoshop. Um, there is Adobe uh, Photoshop Fix, which you can download on your phone. I have that on my phone. Uh, Adobe Lightroom has incredible filters, way better than anything you'll see uh, online. I know that what I'll do is I'll use Adobe Lightroom's filters, and then I'll also use the um, filter from Instagram on top of it slightly, because I know that there's an uh, algorithm there that if you use their filters, you probably get more traction online anyway. Um, so I'll do a combination. Snapseed is a free app that I use probably most of the time, more than anything else. And then KindMaster I use for video. It's just a fantastic app. It's a subscription. It's only a few dollars a month. But these are my four go-to apps. There's one other one I'll talk about here in a moment. They all do slightly different things. You know, Lightroom um, will enhance picture as far as detail. Um, it will help you... Um, you know, maybe get a better vignetting that you can normally get from maybe Instagram or something like that. And it has its own built-in filters that you can add. And they just look a lot more professional uh, when you post them. Snapseed allows you to dial in and tweak portions of the picture. Um, you know, like I took a picture um, actually this morning and there was a piece of a garden hose in the bottom left hand slide. It took me two seconds to get rid of it. I literally clicked the healing tool swiped on the garden hose and it's gone you wouldn't even tell anything would touch the picture so it's that quick and so this isn't anything that takes time this is seconds of work to maybe tweak uh, elements of your picture that way and kind master i love for video because it's just it's just so good you can layer video on video on video on video and it's so easy to use they've got music for free they got filters for free and there's so much that you can add in there text wise and that video will stand out you can chop really easy and and it's all done on my phone. Like all of these items are done on my phone or my iPad, really on my phone. So it's so quick and you always have it in your pocket with you and you can quickly do some things. So any questions on any of these apps or anything you want to ask a little bit more on how these applications are used or did I kind of give you a snapshot at least? Cool. If you do, let me know. So the next piece I have here is Snapseed. So I wanted to highlight just a little bit more. I know I talked about it a little bit, but you'll see an example here. Um, you can see the, the phone, that's what the, it looks like. And this is some of the features. So when you click on the features, you'll see these elements pop up here. You know, there's a lot of things that I use, like the selective tool here that lets you like dial in, in a particular area. I don't know if you've ever taken a picture and you're like, oh, my arm looks red. <laughs> my other arm looks brown that's weird you can actually literally just grab that real fast and with a little bit of saturation just slide of a dial three or four seconds later it's more balanced so if you wanted to do that type of stuff you can it's got a healing feature like i talked about when i took out that little bit of a garden hose it's got a quick crop feature um, and it's got a bunch of other stuff. It's got HDR work if you're into that type of thing you can correct white balance so what that is is if i took a picture in here right now uh, a camera doesn't necessarily know what true white is. So my shirt here is white on it. I would have to tell the camera that that's white sometimes because the, the light may be a little bit more yellow. Um, so to get a truer color that looks more natural, you can quickly adjust the white balance, which is just a slider. 
Um, so it's got a lot of features. It's got a portrait thing if you want to enhance the eyes and it does it automatically for you. Um, so there's a lot of elements within that that you can go to all sorts of extremes or you can make it really subtle or take out a garden hose. So, I mean, it's, it's got a lot of different elements to it. You can add text. So I was getting out of my car. I, I parked my car up, my, my driveway hopped up. And I was like, oh, those rocks look cool. And I had my shake in my hand. So I just sat up in the ground. I put my phone on the ground. So I just popped this phone right on the ground like that. And I just took the picture and uh, I had it in portrait mode on my Apple phone. And this is the picture that was taken. And then I just added those three lines of text in Snapseed. Took me a few seconds, but when you think about that concept of how do you maybe look different from the thousands of other pictures that are floating around, maybe this one's a bit more, huh, that's interesting. Like it's got some text there and that's, you know, the quality is pretty high quality as far as like what you can see. And this is with a phone. So that gives you kind of an, an idea of what you could do in just seconds on Snapseed. This one over here, same thing, text was added in, um, in Snapseed. And slight things like leaving this plate not fully in the frame. That's by design. I didn't, that's not because, oops, oh, I forgot to put the plate in there. I'm, I'm very focused on what I, how I'm framing. So even elements of cropping that plate out slightly, uh, a lot of people will be tempted, and I've seen it, where they would just take a picture of the whole set. You know, I want to get everything in my picture, so I capture everything. Sometimes it's nice just to come a little bit closer. And there was a photographer who once said, um, uh, if your picture is not good, you're not close enough. And I've always kept that in my mind. I don't know if you saw the picture earlier of the buffalo, um, but that's one of the reasons I came in very close and cropped out just a portion of the, the buffalo's head is is because sometimes that's that's unusual. I'm not used to seeing that angle. And so even small elements like this can make a difference. Um, the color theory piece, you can see the carrots here. And the label of the drink, I was, drink, I was going to drink my meal anyway. I was like, okay, that's cool. I got the orange here, I got the orange here, and then I got the red fence in the background. Now this picture ties, even though it's separated, it ties into itself a little bit more, even with the layers back. So that's what's going through my mind when I'm just taking this one quick photograph. I'm thinking, okay, how can I connect elements together? And then how can I make it look slightly different? Um, the next slide, I have a little more example. Um, I'll be using Snapseed, and really, here's a text feature. So this has a text feature. What I did here is I put this on my coffee table and my food. I took a quick picture. I used the white balance to take the the yellow off of the plate because the plate was looking a bit yellow because the lights in our house are or have a bit of yellow tint to it. I cropped it down a little bit just to make uh, it more even. So those lines, because I wanted to make sure there was nice symmetry there because sometimes that makes a picture more appealing when you have symmetry. Um, I enhance things with the details and the selective feature. So there's a selective feature where you just click on what you want to select. It automatically detects it and you can increase um, uh, you know, the saturation or the details in an area. And then overall, I brought out some of the details because I wanted to make sure that even the detail here and here that it really was pronounced opposed to the out of focus in the background. So this is all what's going through my mind when I'm snapping this picture. And then this background here was literally a printed out piece of paper that was in the kitchen. And I was too bored, I was too lazy to type that whole thing out. And I was like, well, if I just take a picture of the piece of paper and then I highlight, you know, use the highlight feature and adjust the contrast slightly, it's gonna look the same as if I typed it out anyway. And then I used a software called Adobe Mix which allows you to quickly put layers. So I was able to take the photograph of the food and I was able to take that image and just within a few seconds have one on top of the other, like you see here. And that's how I came up with this overall picture. So you've got really two apps in used here on my phone and these uh, pieces here. And that gave me this image, you know? So any questions on, on this particular slide? Does that make sense kind of how my process went to put this together and this was all done on my phone so um i have a question yeah if so if someone like obviously you learned how to do this either through like a photography class or whatever but if someone is like oh my gosh like i'm opening this app i have no idea what to do do you have like recommendations for resources for like tutorials or you know actually how to use the app like what's your best recommendation yeah. for that there's two things I would say one is YouTube and because I, I learned Snapseed just by playing around with it and just looking on YouTube say okay I'll have people done in, for Snapseed and things like that a lot of it was just trial and error 
like the the what I used when I did photography and I learned photography it was like on an Apple computer like it was a lot more in depth and you're using the actual Photoshop or you're using Lightroom and it's very different all these apps on the phone are really user-friendly it's literally clicking on things and we'll walk you through what you're doing but it's kind of trial and error and the second thing I would say send me a message and I'll absolutely help you with anything. Even if you want me to edit your picture, it takes me like a minute. I do that for people sometimes, send it right back. But I'll also be happy to show you guys anything But really trial and error on using YouTube. Uh, a lot of these things are so quick, um, but it just needs to, and I would just start with certain features like playing around with the selective tool, playing around with the portrait tool. What does that do to my image? You know, Playing around with the details tool and the white balance. So if you were to take a picture in your house today, you download Snapseed, Take it under one of your normal lights because that's going to be a more of an orange light. It's not going to give you a true um, uh, white light. Uh, you know, that's, that really appears more natural. And try that white balance feature. If that's all you do and you tweak that, now your images are going to look a lot more realistic than they normally would if you just didn't touch the white balance. So I would say get in there, play around with it. YouTube is literally where I started looking. And then just if you guys have questions, I'm happy to help too, even off this call as far as like, hey, maybe tweak this and I'll even tweak your picture and tell you what I did, uh, whatever, whatever I can do to help. But that's what I did really was just playing around with trial and error, taking pictures, taking selfies, whatever it takes. So you can go in and start tweaking with this stuff and you go, okay, that's cool. Now I, I learned how to tweak my eyes. Now I learn how to fix, you know, um, you know, as I said, like maybe the white balance, something like that. So hopefully that answers your question. So. Cool. The other piece I have here, in, and this is kind of that color theory piece, the same image again, but once again, we kind of touched on it, but having, just be conscious of when you're taking your picture, what are the elements that can connect each other, but also what, what's going on in the image, like, because if, like, this one that says join the resistance, I was just using my resistant bands, I'm like, I just pulled them back, and it's like, oh, that's cool symmetry there, so you know, let's try and hold these bands at my legs and take a picture. So, you know, you snap a picture with the bands, but it kind of draws you in. And really why I have this image here is, you can see the orange is so dominant. So it keeps your focus in the frame. So you're not going to be looking off to the left and right of that couch because you've got a powerful color there, but also the symmetry. And you, you'll see this with pictures of roads and things of like that, or you'll see different things. You can say, okay, if I move my camera here, I get more symmetry and I can actually draw the person's attention. Uh, and this is a difficult thing normally to draw attention to where it says join the resistance because I've got a light, a color carpet, and then it's a light text, which normally gets washed out. If I didn't have a strong orange band there that helps draw in, that might get lost otherwise. So that's just kind of a, just a quick tip on symmetry. And once again, that color piece to say, is there anything uh, um, that could make an impact as far as, um, you know, in the image when I have some of those components happening. Not all the time. It's not like I'm obsessed with this. Like, hey, kids, stand here so I have symmetry, you know. Hey, you know, oldest child, you got darker hair. I need you to get people's attention over here. But it's not that extreme, but it's just good to kind of have in the back of your mind in case you want to deploy some of those tools if you are to do something like that, you know. Um, here's one I took on my gym floor. I didn't have any special lighting. This is just the light that's right over my head here. And the light from the window is where you're getting that light on the rim, that white light. It's just from the window. So I happen to have this uh, bowl of Italian wedding suit. Um, I was like, oh, that's a cool picture. I went in and stuck it on the floor next to me here. I just hovered over it with my phone. Um, but what I wanted to do is I wanted to show the two examples. So I deliberately took a picture that you see on the left side, which is what a lot of people would take, which is fine. Um, but just getting a bit closer with the same lighting, the same setup and tweaking it slightly, you know, bringing out once again, uh, I want to take the yellow out of the white a little bit. So that white balance tweaked it there. And with that selection tool, I just grabbed the actual food piece and with a quick slide on the details um, dial, I was able to sharpen some of the food image and then vignette the outside. Now of those two images, one looks a lot more striking than the other one. So as you're looking through, and maybe it's a little bit too commercial, I don't know, but I mean, at least you can kind of get an idea of sometimes just doing a couple of quick changes and getting closer. Um, don't be afraid to do that because that will get people, huh, that's different. You know, I'm gonna stop now and look, even if it's a picture of your shake on the blender and all you do is take a picture of the actual 
stuff before it's blended, which I've done where you can see the powder a little bit and you see all the bits that are gonna mix and the ice might be there. And it's more of a shot of texture. Just thinking about, huh, that's a little bit different. And you can still talk about the same thing, but maybe that's gonna be that one image that slows somebody down at least rather than swiping past and yeah, I've seen a hundred pictures of shakes today, you know? Um, so a couple of other tw tweaks um, or tips. You can see here too, same concept. Instead of taking a picture of my whole plate, I took a picture of the food very close up and it looks very appetizing because it's just very close up. That's it, it was by a window. I held the plate by a window, held my phone and very minimal to do a picture like this, but yet you kind of go, huh, that looks appetizing. And same thing here again, I was having some food. I positioned the two bowls together, hovered my phone over, took a picture. So just really the takeaway here is just don't be afraid to get a bit closer. Um, it can make a big difference. Not all the time. There's probably something you don't want to get too close on. But for a lot of things, don't be afraid to get closer because it will change how that image potentially looks. So, make sense? I'll talk a little bit about some lighting hacks, if you want to call it that. This picture here, three things. I stood in front of my window. I put my phone on, like, which one of those windows that is split in two. So, it has, like, the you can rest your phone in the middle. I sat my phone there, I put the timer on, took the picture, and then I used Snapsy to black, like darken out the background to blacken it more, and that's the result. And that's three steps using the window and my phone. Like this is how simple it is. Now, I, for me, that's not a studio quality because I know what I can do in the studio, but if you think about maybe a headshot, you wanna get a quick headshot of yourself, something that you could put on your website or you want something that's a bit more professional for LinkedIn, you could achieve all sorts of things with just a window, a phone, and Snapseed. And that's all that went into this image. Nothing special, honestly. Um, so that just goes to show you just with the right positioning, using Snapseed, and using the window, you can get some really nice natural light coming in. And once again, playing with that white balance, if it's too uh, intense as far as the, uh, sometimes it can white you out too much, that white balance will actually allow you to dial it back a bit more, maybe make it warmer. Um, and so you can play around a little bit, but literally three things to create that image real quick. Um, other things you can use is paper, like a normal piece of you know paper in your printer. If you hold that here, that will reflect light back up and it will give you nice white light. I mean, you can use a reflector on Amazon. You can buy five in one reflectors that you can bend. I have one of those that I use when I'm on photo shoots. You can hold that for yourself. You could have someone else hold it. And it's got different, uh, it's got gold color, silver colors, the gold will warm it up, but that's another quick tool that folds up real small, but maybe um, you wanna get rid of some shadows, you've got some nice light coming in from the window, but you wanna lighten the shadow here, so having a uh, reflector right here is gonna even out some of the shadowing. Uh, windows, as I said, with natural light is always a go-to. Shop, shop fronts at night are really cool. If you're walking down the street at nighttime and there's a nice shop front, that really helps get a nice like full body lighting and it gives a nice contrast to the darkness around you. I've used shop fronts a lot with photo shoots. Um, it's just a great resource. And uh, beauty lights, you know those round lights, I have one up here that I use just to give me more light when I'm on my conference calls. Those cost $10, $15 and they get rid of a lot of shadows on your face. And then LED lights are, are super cheap right now on Amazon. So five, $10 or even for free here, you can change your lighting because any camera, whether it's a phone or whether it's a professional camera, it treats light like a river. And a camera is going to take the road of least resistance. And so what it does is it doesn't care about quality, it cares about light. So if you were to take a picture and you don't have enough light, it's just going to want to get a picture that's somewhat bright, but you lose quality. So when you see noise on an image, you take a picture and it's got dots on it, or your quality of yourself isn't so strong, all the camera's trying to do is take a somewhat balanced picture and it's willing to sacrifice quality in place of just getting some kind of, some kind of a lighting. So any additional light you can give the camera, your quality is gonna increase. And that's just a very simple high level thought about that, but that really is um, what it boils down to, is and more light the better for any, any photograph, that's, that's gonna make a huge difference. So, you know, maybe two feet over to the left where you're closer to a window versus in a dark area in your room, your pictures already will look a lot different. So, um, so that's kind of what I have as far as, uh, and I didn't wanna to put too much here because I could talk for weeks about photography, but I just wanted to give you some elements of 
apps I use, a couple of quick things for lighting just to keep in mind. Thinking about color, when you're framing, what to put in the picture. And honestly, even for all that, it's just about posting regularly. I mean, that's all good to say, here's all these tips and all that, but I just think being active online, really engaging, and we'll talk about this in just a moment real quick and I'll close this out here, but it's really about engaging with people in a real way. That's what the magic is. Doesn't matter, you could have the nicest picture in the world and you could not even reach out to anyone. It's not about reaching out to people who have 100,000 followers. It's about connecting to that person with 10 followers who's really on their journey and saying, hey, how can I help? Great job. And they're like, wow, I'm, I'm just a person here with five posts, 10 followers, and this person's willing to step out and say, oh, hi, I'm here for you. So it's really about making things meaningful at the end of the day. It's really about making a connection. And that's kind of where this whole piece about you and you guys and First, where you live is the United States of America. Uh, I hope, I'm not sure if you all live in America, but that's where we are, where I am right now. So there's an opportunity here. I know there's people in other parts of the world, but at least speaking from the perspective of being in this country, and it's, it's everywhere. Uh, my brother has his own business. My older brother has his own business. My dad has his own, like all my family is self-employed. So, but you guys have 300 million people plus right on your doorstep if you live in the United States. Don't lose sight of the fact that that opportunity is there. And there's a lot of places in the world where people don't have that. I was lucky enough to arrive in a country, work hard enough. And that luck thing you hear where really it's, it's preparation meeting opportunity. Uh, I executed on as soon as I came around. So I'm telling you guys execute on, on the luck that's right in front of you, which is all your guys hard work, your preparation and really the opportunity that's right there, and you'd be surprised at what could happen very quickly just with um, just working just a little bit more than the person next to you. This community, the thing that I think is amazing about fitness, it's real people who are going through real emotional things. And I haven't even shared half, like if you think of an iceberg, you only saw the top of the iceberg. If I was to come below the water and show you guys some of the other things I've overcome, They'll be like, oh, wow, there's another element to some of these things. But people are going through some real struggles. People are overcoming some serious things in their lives. People have come through some crazy stuff. And as a coach, um, you can come alongside them and just give them that nudge, that text or that word of encouragement that's going to completely change the trajectory for them, completely change the trajectory for their kids, completely change the trajectory for generations to come. So this isn't like, ha ha, this is fun, nice to have. This is real life with real struggles that people are going through and you have the opportunity to actually do something and help. So just don't underestimate that, I would say. Um, you know, hard work does make a difference. I can tell you, um, that's been my edge. I remember when I worked at the university, um, you know, there was people there who didn't want, without going into detail, there was people trying to find ways not to work. I did the opposite. And I remember someone who was in the faculty there, and I was going around emptying garbage cans. I mean, nobody knew who I was. They didn't know I was from Ireland. You saw this guy emptying the gar garbage cans. They didn't know I only arrived in the country two weeks ago. Um, but they always said, hey, wow, you're efficient. How? That, that looks clean. Wow. We've, literally, someone said, I've never seen our toilets look so good. Like, you're cleaning like crazy guess what? I don't care what you have me doing. I'm going to, I'm going to have integrity. I'm going to work hard no matter what you put in front of me. Cause that's, that's not a hack. That's, that's real life. That's real character. And I truly believe in that. So don't shy away from working hard. It does make a difference. And, and as I said, be real, connect with people. Um, because otherwise you might have people follow you for a day, a week or a month. But if you truly connect with people in a meaningful way, people ain't going to leave you. People are going to stick around. They're going to root you on, you know, I'm, I don't consider myself someone who I always call myself an ordinary man. There's a song all about an ordinary man in Ireland that I really like. I'm just an ordinary man. I, I literally have ended up in situations and I've got other background. I won't even get into, I used to be in the music world and stuff like that. Um, but I, 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 I'm just an ordinary guy who's just shown up being real, being positive. The same guy is talking to you right now. There's the same guy you'll see at my job, the same guy you see at my family. I don't change. I don't, there's no facade here. But be real with people and then really connect to people regardless. Um, 
of, of who they are or where they're at. I think that's so important. And I'm here to help. You know, I, I put this here, just that's Irish DORs where I am on Instagram. I'm not kidding when I say DM me anytime. I remember when I worked at another company, um, I had someone who was, uh, well, they were considering an entry-level position, okay? And I was maybe three levels up from them. And I said to him, if you ever need anything, let me know. And they said, yeah, right. I was like, I'm just telling you, here's my number. If you ever need anything, let me know. They texted me one time. It was early hours of the morning. My car st stuck in the snow. I got up out of bed, got in my car, drove to their location, and I helped get them out of the snow. And for years, that person told that story. I wasn't doing it, so I'd have someone go around telling the story about what I did, but I did it because that's what it's all about. And that person to this day always says, wow, you were, you were someone who was really taught me that you got to be real and you got to be there for people. And that's sometimes just those acts of being genuine and being available. So that's what I'm saying to you guys. I'm genuinely here if you need anything. I'm only in it to help. Like That's literally all I'm doing here. I'm only in it to help. And this is my last slide. And really the ask that I have for you guys right now is if you could reach out to three people and not just like today, not tomorrow. And I want all you guys to commit to this because this is simple, but it can be profound. And just tell them something meaningful, not say, hey, nice picture, not say, hey, you know, <laughs> I hope you're doing well. Tell them something real about them. Tell them, it's like, hey, you, I appreciate this about you. Do that to three people and let's at least make an impact to 25, 30 people today. And I think that would be just a great outcome, even if that's all we get from today. So I'm going to stop there because that's everything I had. And I know I talked for a bit. So uh, any comments? And I'm pretty much done. So I can hand it back to you too, Marissa. So and that's me. Um, I just think that just you, oh. real quick going off of, sorry, I had something oh, oh. to add to what he said at the end. Um, Dave, you talked about like, you know, just hard work and, and like how you talked about that. Um, I don't know if anyone has watched this, but the Michael Jordan last dance, I've been sharing about this because it's amazing. I see Dave shaking his head. Um, one of the, like, I don't know, the championship, or there was something that like, they lost the last game and it was like end of the season. And typically, I guess Michael Jordan like takes off and, you know, relaxes for a while. And so his trainer was like, all right, well, you know, that was a good season, whatever. And Jordan was like, I'll see you tomorrow in the gym. And his trainer was like, oh, okay. And you know, he was just like, okay, didn't end on a good note. I'm going to bust ass. Like it was just so cool. I mean, that's basically what he does and what anyone successful does. And it was just, it was really cool. Um, it just aligns with what I literally watched last night. <laughs> um, sorry, I was being loud while you were talking. <laughs> Hopefully I wasn't taking over. Um, that was amazing. I just, I am like honored to have you on the call and, oh, am I breaking up or is it working? <laughs> Um, okay. It seemed like it froze for a second, but it looks like it's back. Your, your character and integrity and work ethic are like amazing. I just, you're, you have so much to offer and, and just the way of like the knowledge of all the things that you've overcome. So I really appreciate you taking the time to share your story with us, even though I know it was only, a, I'm sure a small part of your story. Um, it's pretty incredible what you've, what you've done and what you've overcome and, and how you're impacting people in, in such a positive way. So thank you for taking the time to share that with us. Absolutely. That's what it's all about. You know, we've got to help each other out. And that's if we all do that and we have that mindset, it makes such a difference, you know, because there's plenty of people. I tell you, Caitlin texts me sometimes and that's the difference between me having a good or bad day, you know, so just don't underestimate that connection, you know, so. Yeah. yeah and those those tips were really cool because you i mean you have an eye like all photographers do for yeah. seeing things that other people don't see like i have no idea one of the tips i got from my girlfriend who she just also has a natural eye who takes nice pictures was like i'm like sent you said about symmetry i'm like okay that's an interesting idea because i'm always like trying to center stuff in pictures yeah. i'm like that picture looks so basic though so then your but your symmetry is different because it draws you to a place instead of just being like oh the person's right in the center of the picture so hers was like she offset stuff i'm like oh duh i never thought of that either so just yeah. like little tips like that that can help you just look a little bit differently so i like those little tips yeah absolutely true that's spot on 
It's fun. I know. I I always love seeing people that can like the the soup. Like the the bowl on the left would be like my picture. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm always like, how do people take such good pictures? I'm like looking at their picture, and I'm like, how? Like Stephanie takes really good food pictures. Yeah. She yeah. does really. Yeah. But that's just, it was so cool. I'm always outside. Honestly, I'm outside and I do the, um, what's the thing on your phone? It's like the, Portrait. where it like kind of blurs around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But like, like he said, like I'm always in front of a window, like mm -hmm. outside. It's like people are like, wow, your food really pops. I'm like, it's mm -hmm. called lighting. <laughs> it's, like, it's so true. It makes a huge difference. Yeah. So yeah. You have an eye for it. You take good pictures and stuff of like your food is, all, I'm always like, oh man, I want to eat that. <laughs> this is awesome. awesome like, Stephanie. Yeah. <laughs> well, can we do a boomerang really quick? Yeah. And snaps. I love that you talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. Great app. So I don't know what a boomerang is, but let's do that. <laughs> All right. So you have to just, you have, when I count down from three, two, one, you have to like move. Okay. Oh, well, I can move. Do something, do something, whatever you want to do. Okay. Ready? One, two, three. Nice. See my, my wrinkled forehead. <laughs> no Botox here. <laughs> Be real. <laughs> I had it, but mine's gone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my God, I've never seen your forehead wrinkle. Because <laughs> yeah, of COVID, I haven't gone for my, <laughs> my shot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. I appreciate it, Dave. Um, and I hope you guys got a lot from this. I recorded it and I'll be posting it in the team page so you'll have it to share with anyone that needs it. Cool. Hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend. All right, guys. Take care. Thank yeah, you. Thank you, Dave. Bye.